In this video, I'm going to talk you through some of the things that make this card special as well as some of the construction tips. So first, if you look closely at the word hello and at the birds, you're going to see that they're shiny. So that's one of the things that makes this card special. The other thing that makes this card special, can you see in the background that there's some texture embossing on here? And if you'll notice around each of those holes, you're going to see a little bit of stitching around the holes. Now that stitching is just very subtle, but it's a nice touch. All right, the images from this card came from this set, which is called Garden Bird Houses, perfect for use in the summertime here or any time, especially if you've got friends who really like birds. I like the uh, font in this set because I like having these letters that are a little bit scripty and a little bit thick. The thickness, the extra thickness on this font, that's what allows me to come back and add that shine that I showed you on the word hello. All right, there's three different birds' houses. There's also three different bird images, lots of foliage that you can add for grass on the ground as well as branches in a tree. And then you've got one long uh, pole stamp over here. So each of these bird houses, you could stamp them such that they were on a pole with grass around the base of the pole. And you've got this little stamp over here, which would be a string allowing it to hang from a branch to hang from a tree. So now let's talk about some of those other things that make this special. First of all, I did emboss the background and you can see here's a piece that's been embossed. This is the timber embossing folder. The timber embossing folder is a six by six embossing folder, which means that um, you could have these lines going vertically, whether it's a vertical card or you can rotate it. If you wanted to have a horizontal card, you just would rotate the way it goes in the folder. So that's the versatility of having a six by six folder is you can use it for up and down lines on either a vertical or horizontal card. All right, put the timber embossing folder over here. The next thing is I die cut these holes in here and no, I did not take a punch and punch individually for each of those holes. There is a die Actually, there's a set of dies. This is called the Picture This dies, and it's two dies that each cut multiple holes. The Picture This die, this one is uh, rectangles, three different rectangles, and then this one is six different circles. The nice thing about having a single die cut all of these holes is that you can mass produce very easily. I actually made a dozen of these cards, and so it was very easy for me to mass produce and get every one of those holes in exactly the same um, position with respect to each other. And then you can see here that the stitching is both on the inside as well as the outside of the holes that are punched. I didn't save them. I actually ended up throwing them away, but the holes that came out, the, the pieces that came out of the hole, they also had stitching on them. And so you could easily use those on another project. You could use this die to make the holes you could use this die to simply cut out a bunch of circles that had stitching around them. All right, so now let's talk about some of the challenges of stamping this. There are two stamps on here that make it challenging to try to stamp through the hole. One of them is the little rope that the birdhouse is hanging on because the stamp that uh, does the birdhouse is too tall. So in other words, it would I can't stamp through the hole because then I'd get an ink mark on my brown piece. The same thing with the flowers down here. I'll bring the stamp set back in. You can see that the stamp itself is larger than the hole. If I tried to stamp through the hole, I'd end up with a mark of the, the stems down here on the green. So I cannot stamp through the hole. I have to actually stamp on the white piece of paper that's going to have all those images. And then after they're all stamped, come back and glue this to the top. So that's the construction tip. Now, how do I get them all lined up perfectly? Well, that's where I used my Stamparatus. So what I did was I took my piece and I laid it on here and I traced, well actually I took the die and traced where all the holes were gonna go. And then I took each of these stamps and I laid the stamps so that they would be um, nicely placed within where that hole was going to appear. And then um, I, after they were all stamped, then I put my card together. The other thing in terms of construction that I'll point out is that uh, the top six were all stamped in black and the bottom two, because I wanted the stems of the plants to be green, the bottom two were stamped in green. 
So that's where the Stamparatus makes this so easy. Put my piece of paper in here, use a couple of magnets to hold it so that it won't shift. I can just ink up these bottom two stamps with the green. Because this is the Stamparatus and it's held into position, if I didn't get good coverage, I can come back and stamp a second time. Then I can apply black ink to the top parts of the image. On my finished project, you'll see that I colored this. I chose to use the alcohol markers, which means that I did have to stamp my images in memento ink. If you're using alcohol inks, you want to use memento for the detail. If you were using the round markers, which are water-based markers, then you would want to, then I would have wanted to stamp this in stays on. There are two ends to this marker, one with a small pointed end and one with a more brush-like end. Most of the time I like to use the brush end. It's very pointy and I just feel like I get good color. And then you do want to make sure that it's tightly closed because an alcohol marker would uh, evaporate the solvent if you didn't seal it tightly. Now, again, in terms of construction tips, you may wonder why I chose a separate sheet of paper to glue underneath here versus just going ahead and stamping on the front of the card. And the answer to that is because alcohol inks bleed through the paper and I didn't want that to show through on the inside of my card. So now I just come through and I uh, glue this to the back. I'm putting adhesive on the back side of my die cut. Now before I put this all together, I do want to come back and add this piece that's going to make it look like this, uh, this little birdhouse is hanging. But I don't want it to cover, I mean look how long that string is. I don't want it to hit the bird. And so I'm going to use my favorite stamping tool that I use all the time, a post-it note. A little bit of masking. So I know about where the top of that hole is going to be. I can play around a little bit with this, make sure that I'm happy with the way everything is lined up. And you'll notice there's a little bit of the edge of the white sticking off the bottom there, so I'm just going to trim that before I put it on. Now, the last thing is how to get this shine on the word and on the birds. And that is the fine tip glue pen. So it's got this needle in here that's going to keep the nozzle clear. And I'm going to bring in my scrap sheet of paper just to test it. So I just brought in a scrap sheet of paper and what this will allow me to do is to test um, my squeezing, test how much pressure I need to apply with my thumb as it's coming out of here. And then I'm just going to cover the birds. I'm actually going to cover the flowers and I'm going to trace over the letters. Before you put it away, you're going to want to wipe the end. Squeeze it a couple times just to make sure that the uh, column at the applicator tip is clear. I use my finger as a support and then just put that needle back in the hole. So there are my birds. You can see they're going to dry nice and shiny, but they do need to sit now and sit for several hours before I put anything next to them. But when they're done, it will turn out like this one here.